Good morning, athletes. Welcome to the Ironman World Championships. Hi. This is firstoffthebike.com's look at the World Ironman Championship from Kailua Kona. Images are being supplied by Ironman.com. This is Marinda Carfrey getting her number on and it was a short day for the defending champion, only managing to get to about mile uh, kilometre 80, I would have thought, on the bike before her back uh, packed it in after what was a incident with her vehicle a couple of days earlier. Not what she wanted. Neither was Sebastian Kinlay's day the one he wanted. The two defending champions not having great efforts. Sebastian Kinlay coming in in eighth position and uh, not really firing uh, a shot on the marathon as he ran in a 3.06, not what he wanted. The uh, great images there from Ironman.com. As we can see, the uh, age group is getting themselves ready. The pros are already up the road and swimming. Uh, we've got the blue capped wearing men's age group and uh, they were the biggest age group obviously uh, about to do their thing. Of course the locals being involved all the way in this event. This is our women's age group category and uh, it's one of the best sights isn't it you see in triathlon. Any big mass participatory start. That's what we're getting right here. The images there uh, of the men's age group start certainly is uh, something that uh, sport is well and truly famous for, especially on the Big Island. There they go, 2015 Ironman World Championship. The voice of Mike Riley there, and the uh, pro men took off. Dylan McNeese was the man in charge early, alongside of him, Andy Potts and Jan Fredino. They had a little bit of a breakaway and got themselves up the road nice and early. Uh, always good just to clear the congestion of the swim, as you can see there, our age group men powering through the opening of their day. This is uh, Jan Fredino looking nice on the canyon there as he just motors out of the swim start. He's only a few miles into his race, and uh, this is the ever aggressive Tim O'Donnell, who uh, has got a sharp looking rig there, the old uh, nice Bontrager suit there. Going out of Harvey, Andy Potts as well was an early one in the, uh, I guess, in this side of the head of affairs. He would finish fourth though, did okay, Andy Potts, but the day belonged to the marathon where it all sort of came down to a head and we saw Jan Fredino running a 252 marathon to get his very first victory. This guy, Andreas Raylier, don't think anybody in the world picked him to do anything uh, of this magnitude. He, and that's crazy talk because he is a, a brilliant athlete. He had a great 250 marathon. Tim O'Donnell ran a 255, as you can see there, he's just heading about to head up into uh, the uh, lava fields proper there at the start of his run. But the day, as we said, belonged to this man, Jan Fredino. He is, without a doubt, probably the best triathlete we've seen in the last decade. Olympic champion, gold medalist, uh, 70.3 champion, and now world Ironman champion, the traditional grab the tape that he does. Andreas Raleigh, what a uh, cracking race he had as well. And uh, that 817 was very good. Tim O'Donnell, 818, shows you how close they were to in Troy. Husband of Marinda Carfrey, at least one of the half of the couple there had a good day. Andy Potts protects his fourth place from a year ago. And as you can see there, Tyler Butterfield, who is a very good athlete as well, gets himself into that top five. This is Daniela Riff out on the road. She is something else on a bike. They call her Angry Bird, and that's probably a good reason. She does ride as if she is really angry. Rachel Joyce knows how to pedal a bike as well. She was very, very strong throughout the course of the day. Interesting that she uh, makes a big comeback to the top flight after um, some people might have written her off. I'm not sure she ever wrote herself off. Uh, Self-doubt's not something these guys carry with them a lot. Liz Blatchford did mention, though, she was questioning whether she uh, had it, and she certainly does uh, after her third place for the race. This is Michelle Vesterby there just pedalling into the sun on the way out to Harvey. And she, again, in a fourth place, did a very nice job of uh, pushing herself up the rankings. But the flat-brimmed cap-wearing Daniela Riff was uh, absolutely unstoppable. As we also see here, Rachel Joyce running along uh, the world-famous Elite Drive. Mary Beth Ellis uh, was one of the, uh, well, she was a, a favourite going in. She had a good race. She uh, did falter, though, in the marathon. She's such a uh, tenacious racer, though, is Mary Beth Ellis. And this is Liz Blatchford from the U-Place team and uh, doing uh, her best with a 3.06 marathon that she clocked. And about four or five of the women who raced clocked a 3.06 on the day. Michelle Vesterby clocked a 3.17 marathon, and that is something that she'll uh, no doubt 
work on as uh, her career unfolds. This is Daniela Riff, though, getting the world title there. Mike Riley in the background uh, just giving a little bit of uh, what for. Nice to see, too, holding the tape. Dave Scott and uh, Paula Newby Fraser. That's a good touch. And there she is, Rachel Joyce, coming in second. Uh, 9 10 59, a 308 marathon and a 306 marathon for Australia's Liz Blatchford. Rounds it out for uh, the women's podium with Michelle Vesterby there, just showing us her dance moves on the uh, on the uh, end of the tape there. A great day for her. She's certainly uh, happy to be in that top five. And there you go with uh, Heather Jackson, who is the Ironman rookie, just rounding out the top five. So I hope you enjoyed our little recap there. Thanks to Ironman.com for these uh, great images. Uh, check us out on firstoffthebike.com.